Hey everybody, Anthony here, FSU Off-Road. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the channel. Make sure you take two seconds, hit the subscribe button, because we're knee deep in our 4800 Legends build and we have a lot to do. So let's get to it. In our previous video, we got the rear axle all trussed up, links put on there, got it underneath the Jeep. We also put in our fuel cell, um, got it lowered about an inch and a half, which gives us a little bit more room for the rear radiator where, where we're gonna put that. Um, did some custom mount DIY trailing arms, got them done on both sides now. So the rear is completely done and ready to go. With that being said, we need to do the same thing to the front. We gotta build the front axle. Um, we gotta put some steering knuckles on there. We have to um, get all the links and everything situated, as well as um, put our steering system on there. One of the coolest things that I was able to find online is Spider Tracks actually runs a calculator um, to where you can get all the functions that you want on um, a 609 or a fabricated nine front axle housing. And I've got a good base measurement of everything that I want to do, so I want to try to mimic that onto our axle, and hopefully um, it'll all go smoothly. In the rear, we did a 68 um, wheel mate surface. In the front, we're going to move that to 70. That way we have a little bit more articulation uh, or a little bit more extra space for shocks or our coolovers rather, link, lower links, steering, knuckles, things like that, as well as our hydraulic steering. So, man, we got a long ways to go. Well, what you just watched me do uh, really quick was I went ahead and put like a senior pinion thing in here that way I could get some good measurements um, from the actual housing itself. And then what we did was I went ahead and like I said, this configuration sheet found on spider tracks. My original goal um, was to have like a nine and three quarters offset. So this would be, um, the, the center pinion would be nine and three quarters over, but in the chassis it was a little bit too far over. so. What I needed to do was um, shorten up a little bit to move it more towards center. So from the center to the pinion or where it's gonna sit up here is gonna be eight and a half inches now. Um, it was an inch and a quarter difference from what I had originally planned. So therefore everything kind of moved over just a little bit on the housing. Um, I've got a three and an eighth inch gap here. That way I, whenever we put our knuckles on there, get the knuckles pressed on, um, give me a place to weld and it'll all, all the way fit all the way through and there'll be an eighth inch gap on the back side um, for both sides there. And then ideally, you know, our pinion angle is gonna be at zero degrees and then we're gonna set our knuckles at roughly six to seven degrees. Um, that way it, it'll just uh, be more beneficial off-roading, centering the um, tires back to center. Anyways, now that we got those cut, the fun thing is gonna be getting these pressed on. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but uh, I'm gonna do my best and get these on there. Okay, well, it wasn't easy. Um, I used uh, the sander and basically polished the corners there or the ends and then um, had to beat on the C's. Got them all at seven degrees perfectly. This is our axle. It's pretty beefy as you can see. Not light. But now that we got the C's on, I went ahead and put the outers on there. Um, everything lines up perfect. That way we'll have 70 inch um, wheel mate surface. Next thing that we need to do is we need to start ideally looking at where our shock mounts are going to be, our lower um, link brackets, 
as well as building a custom trush slash upper link bracket system to where one, uh, we can have our link brackets and two, where we can put in our full hydraulic steering system. So we still got lots to figure out, lots to do, but I'm glad to get this um, put together. But anyways, I'm hungry, Taylor's hungry. We're gonna go grab something to eat. I'm gonna call it a day there, but um, we'll be back soon. Three days later. Hey y'all, welcome back to FSU Off-Road. Obviously, this is a method box. Um, we're grateful to have them as one of our sponsors and to help us out with Tinkerita. And um, because I'm extra, um, that's what my husband tells me, um, I picked out the MR101 wheels because I didn't like the 103s. Not that I really know what that means, but I, I thought these were cuter. They're cute. Excited? These remind me of little teardrops because that's what I'm going to be doing when you scuff them up. <laughs> also, to go along with our 101s, our Method Race Wheels, we're going to pair those with BFG KM3s. These are um, DOT. 37s um, that's part of the, the legends class but I think these are gonna go good together we went ahead and got the eight on six and a half because method doesn't make the 101s in the Ford look pattern so we will have to drill out all of our unit bearings to the eight on six and a half which is fine um, but you know what, I gave that choice to Taylor. She wanted the 101s versus the 103s. And I can't much blame her. I, I like the 101s myself. Okay. Got the front axle, moved it to the front of the chassis here, kind of figuring out where we're gonna get it. That way we can get a one, a wheelbase. Two, I can start putting some of these brackets that we've kind of tacked in place, kind of get them ideally where they're gonna be. Uh, we'll put a unit bearing in, we'll put the tire on, kind of articulate it around to make sure that we're not gonna have any clearance issues. Got the front lower link mounts kind of figured out here on the axle. You can kind of see how we got tacked up in there. And there's plenty of clearance in there, so I'm gonna hit anything. I thought I was gonna start with the coilover. Oh, that didn't work out, so we're gonna do some custom mount uh, for both the chassis and the axle. But as you can see, things are starting to come along. As you saw there in that um, clip of me doing this, I kind of basically built two link tabs. These are going to be the outer tabs. They're roughly 70 degrees. That'll give us our links back or link angles back to the chassis. Um, I measured our separation of the upper links to get our 40 degrees. Will be roughly uh, about 45 degrees. So that's plenty. Minimum is 40 degrees uh, to keep everything centered. So our front axle is not going to have any problems. Got the axle set underneath the, the chassis here. Um, I've got our wheelbase measured at 115 inches, um, a little bit longer than I anticipated at 113, but I did extend the rear out just a couple inches and um, I think that's gonna be fine. Now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making sure of all of our angles and everything. Um, that way I can get some links cut and built. That way we can kind of articulate things 
to make sure we're not going to have any interferences. Got the axle back here on the jack stands. Uh, this is kind of just giving me a good working platform. Um, now that I know that the link brackets and all that are going to work out where we need and that I have all the materials that I need to build the links, uh, the next thing that I need to do is to figure out one high steer arms for our hydraulic steering unit. And one of the companies that came on board with us to help us with this 4800 build is going to be PSC, Performance Steering Company. Um, they were they were nice enough to uh, send us a whole box full of goodies um, at you know a reasonable price for this build. So I just want to do a huge shout out to them for helping us with this and um, being able to work with them in the future. Now, what we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to get our ram mounted up here uh, in an ideal location with the supplied brackets that we have. As you can see, I just used a one and three quarter tubing to kind of make like a front truss. I attached it to the knuckles that way that'll keep that from rotating. I'm also going to be plating underneath here. That way all this is going to be nice and solid from anything uh, from the front protecting the hydraulic ramp. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plate this and then kind of get a plate set for where we're going to put our hydraulic steering and then we can build our outer arms and make sure everything's going to fit underneath the chassis and then we can go in and gusset everything accordingly after we do all that. I just want to make sure that this initial mock-up is going to be what we need. spared you some going back and forth but all I did was basically make a template cut it out and put a bend in it and kind of twisted it in and uh, went ahead and put our high steer arms on and installed our ram uh, every like I said everything is just tacked in place I'm going to go ahead and put our unit bearings on on both sides and then drop this thing underneath the axle and then get our links um, built and that way I can flex everything and get um, the coil lever mount installed. We'll throw the tire and wheel on there and flex this thing out. That way we'll make sure there's no interference. And then um, if we have to tweak anything, we can do so because everything is just tacked together. If everything works out, we'll just have a good fun filled day of welding. And then obviously adding some double shear brackets and supports and tying everything in on the steering knuckles themselves. But coming together all right we got a lot going on redrilling hubs to eight on six and a half i went ahead and put our axle underneath the chassis um, and got some parts from barns so we're gonna we now have everything that we need to build our links so what i have to do is i have to reset um, the wheelbase again and then get it all set to where we need it or where I want it about 115 and then I'm gonna put the unit bearings in I'm gonna put the tire on make sure we get that make sure everything looks good to where we're gonna put it and then I'm gonna start building our links get our links cut and fabbed up get them tack welded in place and then flex this thing out and make sure that we have the clearances that we need I can go ahead and see and tell right now that we don't have enough clearance right here. So that just tells me that we're going to have to lower our hydraulic ram, which is not a big deal. That's why we tack loaded everything. So move it down an inch or so and we should be good to go. Got the axle underneath the Jeep here, or chassis rather, as you can see, and 
this is just a, a good teaching point um, as to why I've been tack welding so much of this stuff um, is because right now we're at seven inches of up travel, which is great, but I'm trying to get eight, nine inches of up travel, um, minimum eight inches. So I still have an inch to go. Um, and as you can see here, I only have a half inch there. So which means I'm going to have to lower this bar down, um, which will lower the hydraulic ram. And we can uh, basically just bend these back flat uh, I knew that that could possibly be an issue, but you know what? I think at the end of the day, that's not a big problem. Um, that's very easily obtainable. Um, just quick brackets and stuff. The big thing though that I see is, let's see if I can get you in there. We're just about to hit the motor mount. Now, like I said, those are just tacked into place. Um, so I'm gonna need like a quarter of an inch there, um, minimal. So with that being said, I'm gonna have to um, maybe push the motor back just a little bit um, or raise it up just a little bit, which is fine because we haven't finalized the drive line yet, um, but we did get our transfer case in and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so we have some clearance issues with the motor mounts and things like that. I could build different types of ones or whatever. Uh, but this is just the types of stuff that you want to know whenever you're building a custom chassis and things that you need to take into effect or into account. After a little bit of pondering on how to mount the coilovers, we went with this approach here. So it's slightly angled out here. Um, whenever the tire is at full steer. Uh, there's about an inch or so there, which is perfect because we're gonna have a half inch larger um, coil over. These are only two inches, so we're going with the two and a half. And the angle here will allow for the up travel and down travel with the high miss and high sensors. Um, it just happens that our bar that we put for removal for shock stabilization and everything. It'll work great for the reservoirs. And then what we'll end up doing is plating this. Um, that way there's extra support since it, we reinforced it here. We'll plate this or put some kind of bracketry here. That way uh, this won't have any kind of bend or bow. And then to make sure that everything is gonna be nice and sturdy here, uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna weld this all up and then what we'll do is we'll add a secondary plate that comes down um, for reinforcements there. And I might even reinforce the top or the back here um, with something a little bit thicker in the future as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, all your weight on the front is gonna be on that one mount. So we definitely wanna make sure it's nice and strong. All right, everybody. Well, I think that's gonna conclude this video. I mean, we built the front axle here. We put the seats and knuckles on, got it steering worthy. We put a truss on there. Uh, I do have to go back and plate all that and lower it down a couple inches, but I'm not gonna waste you guys' time with that. Um, we built our lower upper links. We got our coolovers installed, allowing 16 inches of travel with nine well it's roughly about eight and three quarters inches of up travel um, so perfect of what we were trying to accomplish and um yeah i'm pretty excited about how this this is coming together but to keep this video a little bit shorter i want to stop it here and uh continue to work on this thing today so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because i know a lot of you watch and you're not subscribers so make sure you hit the subscribe button it takes two seconds and it's free free 99 also hit the thumbs up button 
uh, if you like what you saw uh, maybe you want to leave a comment down below I answer them as much as I possibly can and if I don't get to you I promise I will and uh, yeah we'll see you guys in the next one